Hello and welcome to the Vicar's Study at St John's in Poole. It's good to have you with us. A particular welcome if you're new to St John's. This Sunday our services are their usual times of 9 o'clock and 10.30 but we recognise that not everybody will be able to make it in person so we're sending out this video and continuing our online ministry that way. This week is the, uh, the, what's called in the Church of England, well not just the Church of England but the wider church, the Sunday after Ascension because Ascension Day was last Thursday and is that Sunday in between moment uh, between Jesus ascending to heaven and Jesus, well I think of next week on Pentecost, coming and making himself known, God making himself known in the person of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit being our advocate and guide ever since. So today, in some ways, in the calendar, uh, today is, is set up to be a Sunday in between. But there are lots of things to reflect on, both as we think back to what's just gone before and what look forward to what's coming. So uh, there, there are lots of things. One, one of the things, after I... I give this talk today and pack a bit of scripture then I'll encourage you to sing the same songs that we're going to sing in church even if you're worshipping at home you can sing the same songs which are how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news the good news of Jesus behold our God he sometimes shows himself in surprising ways but he's always worth beholding there are things that we can learn and grasp and have our eyes opened as we do. Uh, your grace is enough. Freely you gave it all for us. And uh, you're the word of God the Father. Let your cry of love ring out across the lands. Those are the songs we're going to sing, so I hope you will sing them at home. Anyway, our passage of scripture today is the very last paragraph of Luke's gospel. It's interesting actually, Luke's, if we, Luke, Luke was obviously, um, one of the things he said both at the beginning of his first and second book, his second book being Acts of course, then uh, he's in both cases he said he was looking carefully into what had gone on and uh, the ascension obviously made a big impression. That's, this is the bridge between the end of his first book and the beginning of his second. Those are the two places where you will find account of the of the ascension of Jesus. This is the one at the end of Luke's gospel, the last paragraph. Luke 24, reading from verse 50. When Jesus had led them out into the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the last six Sundays, then, we've been uh, thinking, the, uh, thinking about the, uh, the presence of the risen Jesus and, and how wonderful it is to have God with us in that way. Uh, one of the that of course continued for 40 days 40 days after Easter and that's why Ascension always falls on that Thursday in the sixth week after Easter uh, but um, the number 40 is a number that occurs lots of times in the scriptures and is very significant um, 40 years sometimes uh, where the Israelites wandering in the desert for 40 years after they uh, were released from Egypt where God set them free but still they wandered. Uh, 40 years when uh, my namesake King David uh, reigned on the throne. 40 years when his son Solomon reigned on the throne. 40 years. Lost times. Uh, uh, 40 days is also significant. Uh, for 40 days, of course, the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness at the beginning of his ministry. 
uh, for 40 days uh, before the flood of Noah. Then uh, it rained non-stop for 40 days and 40 nights. And now we've got to the 40 days where of the risen Jesus appearing around the place to a great many people. And we thought about last week, didn't we? We thought about the fact there were so many witnesses of the risen Jesus. How amazing it must have been to be one of them and to, uh, to know that the risen Jesus was with them. How amazing it must have been to uh, see firsthand the fact that um, uh, they, can, they could learn that in Jesus all the conventional boundaries of life and indeed death don't apply uh, because he was risen after the grave. And they're about to learn uh, that in another way in which the normal rules don't apply when it comes to Jesus. Because as Luke describes, uh, he ascends into heaven. But just before that, uh, then well, we'll just think about uh, some of the different things that uh, yeah, we can learn from this passage. I'll, re I'll read the first couple of verses again. When, when Jesus had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Well, when you think about it, hands are very important. I use my hands quite a bit in preaching. I don't, when I'm uh, behind the desk here, I, I try not to use them too much uh, because I don't want to be too distracting, but I still see occasionally on the on the videos when I see them on the thumbnails, I see I'm waving my hands around and sometimes that's uh, can be quite distracting, I'm sure. But Jesus, it's, Luke says specifically, it says Jesus raised his hands and blessed them. That's one of the things that, uh, oh, whilst we don't do the blessing at the end of the service that way at St. John's, um, if you were to go to a cathedral, the bishop, or uh, indeed in many churches, then the the the, the, the minister uh, would, would at the end of a service be using their hands uh, in blessing. And it's a kind of reminder of this. And then Jesus, then it says, while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. While he was blessing them, he was taken up into heaven. Jesus taken up, it says in verse 51 of this passage, and indeed, again, if you read that very first be beginning, verse 9 of Acts, Acts 1 says basically exactly the same thing. And the, the, the disciple, and actually, if you read the, the Luke's description in Acts 1, it's the disciples are left gawping as they uh, look into heaven and wonder what has just gone on. Because what, they've seen something that we just don't see, haven't we? Jesus going into heaven in among the clouds. Another illustration that with Jesus, what the usual rules of life do not apply. Uh, people learned that all through his life with the things he said, the things he did, his miracles uh, on the cross, at the risen, the appearances of the risen Jesus and the ascension just continued that process of people learning that with Jesus, the normal rules do not apply. Good things were up for us remembering. As we, as we think that this is only just a very short passage, but there are things we can learn from it. And we learn that after the disciples have seen all this go on, there are two things that they do and then there's one thing about how they do them and all of those we can apply in our own context so let's have a look at them verse 52 then then after after the, the ascension then they worshipped him worship again something often involves hands uh, and some people worship with with hands raised uh, sometimes it's about putting a blessing back to God. Sometimes it's about surrendering. Uh, we 
you know, the classic sign of a, a, a competent saying, I've, I laid down my weapons, I'm surrendering, uh, is hands in the air, hands visible, open to whatever's going to happen. And that's partly how we are in relation to God. We need to be worshipping him. This is what the disciples were doing. And it's something for us. We need to take time to worship. We have so much to thank him for and to worship him for. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we always get, get together on a Sunday uh, to worship and to think about what that means. The second thing the disciples did is uh, just continuing the sentence and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They didn't immediately go off somewhere else. They went back. They returned to their community with great joy. What they were doing is they were taking Jesus on the knowledge of a relationship with the risen Jesus. They were taking that back into their local community. Uh, and for us, we don't have to, of course, um, go somewhere else. We actually, what we're doing is just in our local communities, in Parkstone or wherever you live, then uh, taking something of Jesus back into that great joy. And the, and the great joy of the Lord. It's wonderful knowing the Lord. Great joy is how that, what is, that is described. They went back to their communities with great joy. Now for us, of course, uh, we're not going back to Jerusalem like they did. Uh, because that's not where we're from but even if it was then uh, we, we couldn't do what they did which was to go and spend time in the temple because in 70 AD the Romans flattened it and it's not there anymore it's where the Dome of the Rock is these days uh, and uh, it's one of those things also alongside that we know uh, as Christians that God does not live in a building made by human hands. Uh, buildings made by human hands, like the one we're building uh, at Good Shepherd at the moment, are gr great tools for mission. But that's what they are. And it's, it's not that somehow God lives there and God isn't across the street, just the same. Uh, we're called to take, we're, take the good news of Jesus wherever we go. That's why we're singing uh, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. The good news of Jesus. And let's just look at the last sentence, the very last sentence of Luke's Gospel. They stayed continually in the temple. Of course, not worried about the temple, because we're, but the, something continuous, continual about knowing God. They were praising God. If you think about a road, uh, maybe a road snaking off into the distance or something like that, uh, then the, that's in some ways quite a good um, illustration uh, of the, uh, Jesus in the early days. The people who followed Jesus was no, were known as followers of the way. Jesus, the way, the truth and the life, the hodos, uh, the road, the way. Um, uh, and uh, there are it's one of those things that we take Jesus with us wherever the, uh, the road our road in life takes us um, I think it's one of the great things about being Christian probably the best thing actually that on that road um, Jesus is constantly alongside constantly leading us and uh, with whatever the ups and downs and twists and turns uh, of life might, might turn out to be, then Jesus is continually with us. Uh, now, if I was in one of my more Anglican moods, as I was on, uh, uh, on Thursday at our at Ascension Day service, I would read the Collect uh, for Ascension Day. And it, said, it uses this word continually. So the original writers centuries ago writing that collect recognized the importance of something that's continual something that goes into the future god is with us 
That is a wonderful thing. And with that in mind, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the heavenly dimension of our life and faith. Thank you that what we can see on earth is not all there is. Thank you for the ways you changed the lives of those first disciples as they worked out what it was to follow, the, follow Jesus who was crucified, risen, ascended, Lord. Thank you for the way that as you change their lives then, you change our lives today. Sometimes those changes are sudden. Sometimes those changes are gradual. We take a moment to thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, sorry for the times when we have got stuck in the ways of the past. Sorry for the times when we have not, as the disciples who saw this uh, wonderful event taking place, we have not worshipped you as we should sometimes, and we say sorry for that. Sorry for the times when we have not taken your joy the good news of Jesus into our communities in Parkstone and beyond. Sorry for the times when we felt confused with those first disciples they must have sensed a bit of you leaving them of course that you were about to fill them in a spectacular way in the coming of the Holy Spirit but they were in this in-between time. We sometimes feel in a bit of an in-between time, and so we pray. We want to say sorry, Lord. Help us not to get stuck. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, please, Lord, that we, like these uh, first disciples, uh, may worship you as you deserve to be worshipped. May we take you, your joy, your good news into our communities and see them along the way transformed as so many were in the early days of the Christian church after this. Lord, we pray please that as the Christian church crossed boundaries of language and culture and experience and circumstance and all those things, then may it do so now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray as Jesus taught the words or we call the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. See you next time.